is Hard Parking, sponsored by Right Hunt and Right Toyota out of Scottsdale, Arizona. I'm your host, Jay Finning, coming to you from my home studio in Gilbert, Arizona. Coming up on today's show, Mr. Danny Niku visits me in studio and we get to have our AI discussion. AI is artificial intelligence, but less for like robots and more for software. So Adobe has the generative fill and there's a lot of other AI applications out there, whether it's writing articles for you or putting things in photos just by text, by you saying, draw me a rainbow and then it draws you a rainbow. So we're going to talk about that. You know, the intention was to talk about jobs that AI would replace in overall AI and how it kind of affects creatives. He's a creative and I tinker a little bit. This weekend, I was at the Modern Culture Sanctuary 5 event, but I'm saving that wrap up for next Monday. So I want to get this AI stuff out of the way. So before we get to that, supper versus dinner. Were you raised in a supper house or were you raised in a dinner house? And by definition, they are very different things, but I think most people acknowledge them as being synonymous. If you're from the north, you say supper. If you're from the south, you say dinner. One of them actually is the main meal of the day. One of them is kind of like a, an elaborate lunch. I think supper might be kind of the elaborate lunch, and then dinner is like the last course of the day. But were you a supper person or were you a dinner person? Because growing up for me, it was always breakfast, lunch, and supper. And it wasn't until I was much older that I started hearing the differences. And then eventually I looked them up. I go, oh, they're not, a, they're not synonymous. They're, they're two different meals of the day by definition. When I get to some of my polls, I do the polls on the hard parking channel, which is on my main Instagram. I took a photo of a picture. It said chili, chicken, hot dogs. And corn and it was a sign basically telling you where to go to get this stuff we we're at uh, this place called schnepp farms we took zeke there but i had some fun with it i know what it's supposed to be but i asked on the poll was it chicken comma chili comma and hot dogs I'm like you can get all those i didn't even put corn four different items or is it chicken chili hot dogs so basically chicken chili like white chicken chili but then hot dogs so chicken, chili, hot dogs. Most of the people, a, a large majority of the people said chicken, chili, and hot dogs, which obviously that's the real answer, but you guys got to work with me here. Also magnets. I had an opportunity to buy some magnets. I don't really believe in magnets, so I asked, are you team stickers? Do you prefer magnets? And then the joke was, people still use magnets? Almost two to one, everyone is team stickers. A lot more people said they like magnets. Magnets are better. And then, of course, another smallish percentage, and you can vote more than once, asked if people still use magnets. I don't know why people sell magnets. I don't really allow any of that shit on our fridge. The front of our fridge is like a stainless steel aluminum, so the magnets won't stick, so you have to stick it on the side of the fridge. My NSX, new one, my old one, they're aluminum, so magnets don't stick. So I've always been team stickers myself. The other day I was driving, there was a major accident by my house, so I took like a major detour up another street. But then I came across a street sweeper, and I asked myself, because I'm looking at this thing, and it's on the outside lane by the curb, and it's just kicking up nothing but dust. My thought was, do street sweepers actually work? Because every time you see them, they're just kicking up dust. So I decided to look it up really quick. And according to sweepingcorp.com, which they probably own a street sweeping company. The question is, are street sweepers actually effective? And the answer is, if these toxins are left on the street, so this looks like it's taken from something. If these toxins are left on the street, they make their way into storm drains and eventually into our, stream, our streams and waterways. In fact, street sweeping has been defined as the best management practice by the EPA in preventing storm water runoff contamination. And so what do they do? Do they clean it, and then they have like a big bucket on there, kind of like your little robot that cleans your floor if you do that, or if you have a carpet cleaner, right? The carpet cleaner, you fill the thing with soap and water, and the extractor is what they're called. Does it work like that on the street? It has to. Otherwise, it just looks like it's kicking up dust. I'm not convinced that they actually do anything other than kick up dust. Although, 
according to some of these pictures, some of them actually look legit. But the ones that I see is always some person driving this small, cool-looking Tonka truck. It's never like the big, big ones. If you Google street sweepers, you'll see some really big ones. I've never seen anything like that around me. It's always some weird little thing with some person driving it, and it looks like it's not much bigger than a forklift. It's like a fat forklift. It's like a it's like a Zamboni and a forklift had a baby, and then they decided to mix in a big sweeping element. That's what street sweepers always look like to me. Anyway, coming up after this word from Four Wheel Online, Danny Niku. Jay Finning here, and I want to tell you guys about Four Wheel Online. For over a decade, Four Wheel Online has been bringing the best truck accessories and truck parts to enhance the appearance and performance of all trucks and SUVs. They are dedicated to providing an extensive range of upgrades that will match any maker model on the road. Your truck products cover everything you need to give your truck a custom look and added functionality. And if you need a tire and wheel package, head over and use the configuration tool. They carry all the major brands of wheels and tires, so we'll get off of it today. So visit them online at 4 Online or call them at 813-769-2451. Again, that's 4 Wheel Online, the number 4 Wheel Online. In studio, joining me, and I've been teasing this conversation for a while, Mr. Danny Niku. Yo. We're going to talk about AI, because we've had this conversation, pros and cons, and you may be just full of nothing but cons. You may have some pros, we'll find out, but it's it's kind of one of those things where I talk to myself, and I'm like, what kind of jobs could AI replace? Because our jobs are getting replaced all the time, and then, of course, what kind of jobs could be created from that? We don't have to get into the jobs that get created from that, but you know, what do we see it? eliminating and i think you had made a comment to me recently when we hung out and, and did a shoot and i go let's talk about that yeah so first off you know welcome back in studio you know just kind of catch people up on what it is you do because you've been on this show before but listeners come and go right so i am a commercial photographer but i shoot a lot of motorsport so i just got done shooting formula drifter window and then the week after we did grid life this just last weekend and at Laguna Seca. So I just got home from that and scheduling this between my editing binges right before I have to head out for SEMA. So you're a, I mean, you're a full time, this is what you do, you know, work yep. at a, like a metal factory or whatever, whatever, <laughs> whatever you were doing back during the SEMA build. No, no, I, I dropped my engineering job and yeah, photos full time and video now. We both talked about the famous Peter McKinnon. Yes. Did some series. I haven't watched since. I go in and out of watching this guy. He's got incredible energy. I celebrate his success. He's probably one of the most popular people of his ilk uh, you know, yeah. on the gram for sure. Uh, but he did this competition and we talked about it where he was talking about the, the, uh, the generative fill that Adobe has. And of course, there's a, a bunch of other AI companies that have kind of popped up and some of it's a hype train. But Adobe seems to be doing it right. And he did this challenge. He goes, send me your photos and I'll see if I can tell what's fake and what isn't. Remember yeah. that? Yeah. And he was probably 50, 50, 60, 40. Pretty surprised what people are able to do. And my thought is for someone who doesn't really, I mean, I produce content, but nothing like what you do. And right. for the stuff that I would typically use Photoshop for, I'm like, wow, this is a game changer. Well, I mean, I mean, the stuff you do is is on the same level. It's just a different discipline. Yeah, I appreciate that. Uh, but okay, I want to remove this thing from my picture. Right. Right. Traditionally, I would, and I get really granular with it, not as much as people who really get paid to do it, like my friend yeah, Alex. You, you go pixel by pixel. I do. I, I zoom in. I'm like, what the hell is this? Yeah. And, I, and I, you know, clean it up. No, I, re I remember how it was when you were designing your uh, wrap for the NSX. It was legitimately pixel by pixel. Yeah. For all your shadows and everything. It's funny, though, because it's the things that you see and you don't think people would recognize. But right. if you see it, imagine it, just it blown sticks up. sticks out. Yeah. It's like, oh, well, that, that's kind of weird. That's kind of fuzzy. Yeah. Um, but I thought it's phenomenal. It's a great tool. But when I think about the time that I would spend editing a photo, and now through the course of some text commands, the program, if you have a strong enough computer, can do it for you. Even some of these people who live on these apps to think the app is great and it really isn't that great. Like Facetune or, or something. Facetune like that. or even Canva, you yeah, know, you some go. of these other things. So they're great for content producer on a social media level, but overall they they're not really that good. But even on that level, I'm looking at it and I'm like, 
this saves so much time. And there's people whose careers, their jobs, their side jobs, their primary jobs is editing photos and things. And, you know, I think you had said something to the effect that oh, yeah. a real... If, if you're afraid of being replaced by this AI engine, which is essentially just a powerful tool, if you're afraid of being replaced by that, then you're probably not creative enough. What did you mean by that? That's what I wanted to kind of get into. So, the like... As you were mentioning, the generative fill for Photoshop, fantastic tool. I've been abusing it lately because, <laughs> I mean, it's right. such a colossal time saver. And especially the, the AI selection uh, options that you have now for like Lightroom, you can just click your subject as an option and it'll pick exactly what you want it to. Sometimes it doesn't do it quite right. I was going to say most of the time. Yeah, most, you can most of the it. time it'll, it'll do it. Yeah. Um, but it's not, it's not perfect. The tools are not perfect. They directly respond to your input. So it's not like it's going to replace anybody because it can't think for itself. True. Um, no matter what, you have to tell it what to do. And if you can't figure out how to tell it what you want exactly, either you need to be able to do it yourself manually, like passing out individual objects and things like that, like we used to do before any of this stuff was a thing. Before... Um, Content aware fill was a thing. You just have to do everything manually, and you almost have to learn how to paint. Yeah, that's to true. Do a lot of that stuff. So this these AI tools are fantastic uh, resources as far as finishing uh, photos and and things like that. Yeah, they're not as I think for a lot of the general things they're great, just like you're saying. And this is what you do for a living, and you live in this world. Yeah, and me as a very casual user, but I. I must really struggle with using the right inputs at times <laughs> because when you look at some of this stuff and I've tried to do like the, the, the step-by-step -step tutorial and I still somehow screw it up. But when you look at some of the stuff that people are submitting, I'm thinking that, and we're going back to the Peter McKinnon video, you can manipulate the photo and then you can pick which of the results that you like you can merge that layer and then you can go back on top of that and do your own edits yes so i don't think people are relying purely on that i think they're using that as a shortcut mm -hmm. for the most part and then going and cleaning up what they see that's my theory yeah so uh, on instagram for example i follow a bunch of artists that are composite artists they'll take images from all kinds of different pictures and combine them into something that they see in their head and the finished product you wouldn't believe was made from all these random images. Now, the way that the um, options in Photoshop are for the generative fill, as long as you keep hitting enter to generate a new option, it'll give you sets of three. Yeah. So it'll give you more things to pick from, but at the same time, if none of those are what you're looking for, you need to be able to do it yourself. Otherwise, it's not a time saver. Yeah, you're right. Because I did that for one of the photos I did with uh, three... Type S, like just different accurate cars. Yeah. And when I posted it, it was like we were in Rome or something. And I typed in Rome sunset. And I probably went through 25 photos before I found something that looked great. Exactly. For me to post it on social media. And the people were like, wait, uh, when did you go to Rome? I didn't. <laughs> this is a top of a parking garage in, uh, in Phoenix. Yeah, and I think I saw Brandon um, do something like that with his, his car. He's been playing around with the uh, Forza photo modes. Yeah. Where he puts his car in all these different places. And yeah, that's it's cool. But it if you can't get the stuff you want initially, um, you either have to be able to do it yourself immediately or you just be patient with it. And then it ends up not being a time saver. Yeah. And there's a ton of different programs out there. Adobe made it famous, but there's a ton of different ones. And I've seen pictures of things that, there's no way it's not real. But then when you zoom in, you pixel creep. This is, I think this is a term you guys use all the time. Yeah. When you or zoom like in and start. pixel peeking. Yeah, pixel peeking. And when you zoom in and start looking at details of like people, mm -hmm. their eyelid could be a little weird or their hands. Oh. It struggles with hands yeah, and extremities. That's, that's the other thing. The, the, the AI stuff, they can't do people very well at all. Right. Like, have you seen the, the Budweiser commercials they did with AI? No, I don't, I don't oh my think God. so. It's straight nightmare fuel. The, 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 <laughs> it's they so, probably did it on purpose? Yeah, they were testing it. Okay. It was, it was to, to 
pretty much um, demonstrate what is possible with AI. But either the people look alien or just disjointed and hands have weird flanges or it, it's just yeah. all kind all over the place. Yeah, so it's like you you kind of get sucked into the main image, but if you just start looking around, you'll see some weird shit. Yeah, and the longer he looked, the weirder it gets. Right. There's a I, I I pulled up a photo of myself and I told it to generate I think add arm or something like that. And in one of the one of the photos, oh, I actually posted it on Instagram once and people were laughing. And in one of the photos, it, it wasn't even me anymore. It was like this half dolphin dog looking thing. And then the other one, it, it had me in the foreground and then put somebody who was generated with the AI, another person. And you it, say that and it, I immediately think like Full Metal Alchemist. Right. <laughs> yeah. Fair exchange here, you know, but it, it was, it's crazy. And then one of the pictures that I did for, I had him on the guest, Randy Marchetti, actually the arm racing in a sex that we shot the video yeah, yeah. of that one day I'm going to fucking finally get it out there. I was trying to clean up a picture from his of his way back in the day, and it added some random people around him and next to him. And it looked like he was on a date. <laughs> yeah, there was there was one image I was trying to clean up from one event a while. I think it was from one of the grid lives I was doing. I tried to add the car at a specific track, and it just it could not handle it. So I had to go and find a stock image of the track and do it myself. Yeah, it doesn't know that stuff. I tried to do a thing the same thing with Road America. Yeah, it just got all goofy, right? Yeah. Yeah. Car in front of racetrack. Car in front car in front of Road America racetrack. And it just does like this super weird shit. Yeah. But AI beyond then painting and generative fill, they're using it to do a lot of things, you know. And one of the podcasts that I listen to, they say it's kind of a buzz right now. Like virtual reality was. 10 mm-hmm. years ago, everyone just went ham in on virtual reality. And then most people took a step back and they're talking about AI enterprise. AI is really what the thing is where in the workplace you would type in the knowledge base, you know, where is this? And instead of having to go through and click it yourself, it would bring back the result almost like you're really chatting with somebody. And although it could be handled with internal, I guess, securities and rights, I could say how much does Danny Niku make <laughs> and the AI can come back and tell me your exact salary, which of course would cause a big issue, right? you know, in the workplace, but there's people that would typically be responsible for that. And I think those are the type of people whose jobs could be at risk, but there still has to be some sort of an overwatch. Yeah. Like some kind of oversight type thing. Yeah. Cause I've never used chat GPT, but I've heard that it just basically spits out gibberish once you really start reading what it's saying. And I've actually read some articles online where I'm like, this article isn't saying anything. And it makes me wonder if it's an AI written article. Right. But at the same time, how many people actually realize that? When they read right. It? I mean, when you read the same thing every six sentences, basically just a different way to say it, you have to get suspicious. Yeah. Like the direct website, which has like movie news and stuff. Mm-hmm. I used to follow like MCU direct or just movie direct and it's like Marvel has just announced phase five shocking surprise and you go and you start reading it and it's just basically saying the same thing over and over and over and there's no way somebody wrote that that has to be and you you see that a lot with articles these days yeah and yeah it it leaves you wondering was this just generated or is somebody legitimately not paying attention to what they're writing there was a video that a friend of mine from high school I guess grade school too sent me the other day and it's a guy, a music producer on YouTube. And as I started watching it, it was clear to me, he was just looking for more views and probably hoping to get signed by a label. Mm -hmm. Cause the guy didn't have a lot of views. He didn't have a lot of followers. And what basically what it was is he created his own beat and wrote his own lyrics and then used AI to make his lyrics sound like it was Tupac. Oh, the voice generation AI stuff. Yeah. And it sounded Almost like 90% Tupac. So if you wouldn't have known because people's voices change throughout the years, you would have believed it. And of course, I think it was like, I don't know, an eight minute video. And once I started watching for 30 or 45 seconds, I realized it was just this guy trying to get us to listen to his beats. (laughs) And then I started scrolling through and then, you know, maybe the last 30 seconds he played it. I was like, son of a bitch. 
that sounds really good. Yeah. And so now they could use that technology to emulate people's voices. So I definitely went down a rabbit hole, like I want to say maybe two months ago, of AI covers of other songs, Mm -hmm. but with cartoon character voices. So like SpongeBob doing a cover of Golden Hour or something, or Squidward. And some of them, it's incredible. I, I guess... Like you have to pick the right song for that vocal sure. range. Yep. Otherwise, because some of them are just awful. It's like Milo the Cat. And they Not cut every song off. works. Well, like some of the some of the notes aren't there. They'll cut off or just sound super distorted and terrible. But then others, you're like, wow, this is spot on. And this could actually be legitimately somebody performing this. So that's another issue then is... You know, I had Reggie Watkins on here a few weeks ago, part of the SAG after strike mm-hmm. in, uh, you know, he's an actor, does voice acting, does real acting, and he's on a couple of the Call of Duty games and he's on the new NBA 2K. Yeah. But one of the big fights that they're having with the, the studios is the ability to use their likeness and their voice to generate content. Yep. And that's one of the things. Should be illegal. Um, should be highly illegal. Absolutely. But. I don't, I don't know why it's not yet, but it's something they're fighting on because you've seen the, what do they, what do they call it? Where you, like, let's say Donald Trump's up there, but it's not really Donald Trump, but it looks like oh, Donald the Trump. deep fakes, deep fakes. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, yeah. We've seen a lot of deep fakes the last couple of years. There's, there's always that Keanu one. That's pretty entertaining. Yeah. But not Keanu Reeves thing. Yep. And I mean, that shit looks real depending on who's doing it. And that's some scary shit. And that's all done with deep fake slash AI technology. Yeah. It's, it's pretty uncanny. Some of the things you can get away with, um, with these generative things. Um, like if you've taken a look at unreal engine at all lately, the unreal engine (laughs) five. Yeah. I don't know if they started making games for it. Have they? I know that. Um, I think they're using it for some games, but I don't think those are out yet. Yeah, I watched a video on it a couple of years ago, and that's when I realized my computer was just uh-uh, not able to handle it. Not able to because everything was built on the three and four engine. Yeah, and I think they use like a um, a Tomb Raider graphic or something, and it would just look like I think real movie studios are using this technology in movies. Absolutely. Yeah, and so I would I would be surprised if they didn't use something close to that or the actual release of unreal five for like avatar or something right because the water in that movie is really really well done and that's one of the hardest things to do is make water look real in a in a film yeah at least digitally yeah Um, they probably are using the unreal five so it's going to be a big room full of green more movies are green than people think i follow that mr green guy or whatever it is on uh on youtube if you guys don't know what that oh, is. With the, uh, with the whole suit that he wears. He always has a green yeah. suit, and sometimes he cracks a soda at the end of every video. And he goes through and he scrubs scenes for movies, and then he looks for his green counterparts. I don't know if he actually really sees them or not. But then he pulls on that filter and pulls the green back, and you see nothing but all the props and the green people holding up the real actors and holding up the real objects. And yeah, he just, just removes all thing. the effects layers. Yeah, yeah so I watched... Um, and we'll get to the new prelude. Actually, we'll we'll talk about the new prelude because it just got released. Uh, or the it's not the new prelude, the concept prototype, whatever. But there's the John Wick three when they're fighting on the bridge on the bikes, the oh, cross yeah. rockets, and that I saw whole, the green that whole bike sword fight thing. Yeah, yeah. So you have Keanu Reeves sitting on a bike, a real bike. And then you have the other people on the bike, and then you have everybody dressed in green rocking the bikes back and forth and moving them around. Wow. Well, then, and no wonder people look so calm when they're fighting because they're not actually moving. Yeah. You know, and it's just, I, I figured that scene would be somewhat real, and some of that stuff was CGI'd. The actors are real, the bikes are real, and that's it. I'm like, <laughs> holy shit. Yeah, it's, it's impressive what you can get away with um, as long as you know how to light things. Yep, that's it. Yep, yeah, it's lighting. all lighting. And another thing is, um, what's his face? A super famous, famous movie 
director who does all the mobster movies. I don't know why I can't think of his name right now. Martin Scorsese? Yes. You know yeah. how he said that he controversially said that uh, the comic book movies, the MCU, that's not real cinema. Right. And I would almost argue it's got to be hard to be in a big green room and actually be realistic and act like you're believable. And I would say a lot of those guys, I mean, you, you can feel their emotion. I would, I would definitely say it's a different approach to cinema. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't say it's not real cinema because yeah, you definitely have to imagine more of it. Even if there are monitors in the room that let you see what's around you on those screens. Right. Or if you're working in, um, what was the name? What was the name of the thing they used for, um, Nolan book of Boba Fett and things like that. Oh, that, that room that, and that, that, in, that dome. Yeah. Yeah, that dome. I forgot what it's called, but the they MCU use it, used it for Mandalorian and whatnot. Yep. That's um, cool, though. It's, I wonder if it's the same technology oh, of as the, the Vegas, Vegas ball. Yeah. yeah. It's got to be, right? Um, because I've seen videos I don't, I don't from know inside if it's the that same thing. Because it's a different kind of projection mm. than what's in the dome. But I think conceptually, it'd be very similar. Because that removes the green screen. Completely. And right. you actually feel like you're in, you're immersed in that. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I just think it's a different approach. Um, but there are certain things you just can't fake. Yeah. Like using practical effects to actually interact with compared to anything with a green screen that's just imagined there. You don't get the same kind of response from actors yeah and it's funny though because i just got done watching peacemaker and you know his i don't know if you've ever seen the peacemaker but I he's, not. he's got his pet it. is you know john cena's pet is eagly which is his best friend which is a bald eagle but eagly's just like this bowling pin prop <laughs> what yeah yeah but there's scenes where he's in, he's interacting with Eagly and holding Eagly and hugging Eagly, and it looks really good. And then you see the behind the scenes, you're like, that dude is, that thing looks like a bowling pin, and it's an eagle on TV. So at least that's a tangible. That's hilarious. Prop. Yeah. But yeah, like oh, uh, the volume is what they called it. So that that's funny though. The bowling pin, really? Yeah, I don't know. He wasn't a bowling pin, but he was bowling pin looking. Just like it was a weird white thing. Like almost just some some kind of statue? Yeah. Okay. It didn't even look like an eagle. It was just like this weird statue. (laughs) But yeah, you can't... I I don't know. There's no substitute for practical effects. Yeah. As as cool as green screen stuff is, you just... You can't... There's 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 something in people's brains that tells them that something isn't quite right when they look at an image, for example. If something's a little bit off, they won't know what it is, but you can tell looking at something that something seems off. Whereas if you use a prop or like for Mandalorian, they had the actual um, physical Grogu. Yeah. Thank, thank you for not saying Baby Yoda. No. No Baby Yoda here. That's what I tell everyone. It's like, it's not Baby Yoda. It's the same type of being. It's not Yoda. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. It, um, we're getting off the AI thing. That's my fault, but you're right. But I would, I would say that for some of those characters to watch their character arc through the 20 something movies, that's real acting because, because of everything we just said, right? Like you feel it, you see it in their face, their yeah. eyes. And that's like, Holy shit. I couldn't do that. I'd yeah. have to, I need, I need to see this dog dying to cry. I can't look at a freaking, <laughs> an, a soda can with eyes on it. Be like, Oh, well, like, if it was digital, you would notice right away. Yeah. Yeah. Even yeah. even as good as effects are, and AI generation for for movement and hair movement and things like that is, you would still notice right away. Yeah. But I still think I, AI is taking jobs and is going to take jobs. Oh, maybe- um, it's great at doing manager jobs. Yeah. There's a, I forgot what I was watching. Like clerical stuff? There was some show, and it's like a year or two old now, and it's about the future and all that shit, right? I think mm-hmm. it was on History Channel. I may have talked about it before on here, but they use an AI mm-hmm. secretary, 
right. to book this per- all this person's appointments, and it looks like a female's face when you walk into the building. Yeah, that's not horrifying or anything. And it, it's, right, exactly. <laughs> and it recognizes, hello, Danny. So that's some I see you early shit. for your Yeah, I see you early for your appointment. You know, according to Jay's schedule, he's busy, but actually most of his meetings run short, so he's probably available right now. Let me get him type of deal. Yeah, and I'm like, holy shit. This thing not only takes over the job of your secretary, but it rats your ass out. <laughs> it was the craziest thing. And then it's real. Like Secretary's a narc. Yeah. People are using that. Want to talk about the prelude? Sure. Let's talk about the prelude. <laughs> so Honda recently unveiled the concept for the Honda prelude and the reactions are all over the place. There's some diehard prelude people that I know that love it. There's people who don't love it. And then there's everybody else, and I always say this, every time a car is unveiled, even though it's just a concept, people love to tell you what they think about it, and that's okay. That's why we do what we do. It's just when people get irate and angry that I'm like, get over it. We don't know what it's going to look like. We just have a concept. I mean, that's the point of it being a concept. Right. Because the Acura, what, precision concept eventually became the TLX. Yeah. And it looks nothing like the precision concept. We don't even need to talk about the F. The FT1 and the Supra. I, yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to revisit that. I was okay, we won't really revisit sad. that. What are your thoughts, having seen this white, um, recently unveiled? And by the way, they told us last month that they were doing this, and everyone's like, "Oh, it's going to be the new baby NSX. It's going to be the NSX." I'm like, "No, I, Prelude." Well, no one knew at the time. Oh, okay. But I had it on good intel that they aren't revealing any NSX anytime soon, and they haven't even really sketched one out. So now we know it's the Prelude concept. What are your thoughts on this Prelude concept? I'm curious what the interior is going to be like. Because that, I mean, that's one of the most important things for me. But that front end, it looks like a combination of the brand new Prius and a Ferrari SF90. The way the headlights are. Yeah, and you know it's funny you say that because I couldn't put my finger on what it reminded me of and it reminds me of that the part underneath and everybody who's listening if you're not in a car if you have access to a you know your phone look up the prelude concept so you can follow along you're right when i look at it i for some reason i see the z from the oh yeah the roof line the roof line a little bit and it depends on the angles because i kind of it looks prius like but I couldn't quite figure out what that front looked like in, in your right. The headlights themselves look kind of like a Prius as far as the shape. But yeah. then if you squashed an SF90's front end, it would be that front end. That's interesting. I didn't see that before, but you're right. And then when I Googled it, the 2015 Honda CRZ, which a lot of people don't have, it has kind of a CRZ long swoop from the hood. To, I know, but um, I feel like the roof the is, is definitely more Z. It is. Because now that I'm looking at this three quarter. You're absolutely yeah. right. It looks like a Z. People love it and they hate or it. Or even, I, even it could be even the the Supra roofline. Yeah, and then my thought of it is, I don't necessarily like it, but I don't dislike it. Like I don't really care. I think it's cool that they're doing something. Yeah, um, I mean, I feel like they they seem to need to put something out. I don't like that front end though. I don't like it. Nor do I. The SF90 slash Prius slash Honda CRZ. I'm not a big fan of the rear end either. It's weird, right? Like the front three quarter view, the part that reminds us of kind of the of the Z. You know that actually looks kind of cool. Yeah, and if the the headlights didn't stick out so weirdly, it would it would be a pretty nice design. Yeah, and I don't know if those are headlights or those are DRLs, and the headlights those are those are definitely DRLs. Yeah, and what's that? little line on the front underneath you know it's like a weird design oh that weird thing on the nose yeah yeah that weird thing on the nose it looks like it would be a vent of some sort but a vent it doesn't it doesn't make sense to me it's a door oh that almost looks like another DRL like in this shot yeah he's showing I was wondering that if it's another light that'd be kind of weird though that would be very weird. <laughs> or is that the DRL and the other two are just the signals? So there are there is there's a couple angles that look cool. I'm showing him one angle. Oh yeah, I just looked at that one. Yeah, and then kind of the, for the back, same set. Yeah, kind of the back, not quite full three quarter angle. I didn't know what I 
if I really like the taillights, but it's actually kind of cool. But again, I don't really care that much. I'm not going to buy one. And there are some people who are upset. They're like, oh, the Prelude is this great car and it's a sports car. And it's like, no, it's not. You guys can hate me if you'd like. You know, here's the thing. No, it was just originally it was just a fun coupe. Yeah, people love to use revisionist history with their memory. You just he, This guy just killed two cans of sparkling water in front of me in less than 30 minutes. I like to drink water. <laughs> I like to drink water too, but I've only got half of my bravado. Two, two thirds. Well, four fifths of my bravado down. Um, but people love to kind of romanticize on things like the prelude, like the Integra. And well, yeah, cause it's something that they grew up with. They have an attachment to it. Yeah. But people think that like the prelude was never a high performance sports car. The last prelude oh, they had not. was pretty good as far as what it was. You yeah. know, it was an Integra beater. It was a bigger motor and everything else, but they were never, like cool car. I mean, they were cool. No. They were they were not designed to be in the same league as uh, an Integra Type R, a Civic Type R, or right. an FD, or an NSX, or any of that. Yeah, and then half that competition doesn't even exist. So, what would be the in your mind? What would be the Prelude's competitor? An MR2 if Toyota put one out. Maybe an eight six. Yeah. Maybe an it 8.6. It would probably be in the same group of yeah. the, as Good of, call. of the 8.6. Yep. The 8.6. Yeah. It's got to be that, right? Because it's not, not a Z. No. Because the Z, the Z is above the 8.6. It's in the same league as the Supra. Well, eh. I mean, yeah. we'll move away from that one. But yeah, it's, it's designed to be in that same group. But I, I, mm, I'm having a hard time thinking of anything else besides the 8.6 and that. Right. In that category. So either it's going to be ranked, it's it's going to be put up against cars that are categor- categorically better. Yep. And it's not its fault. Or it's going to be put up against cars that are categorically worse. Right. Because it'll, that category doesn't exist. It'll come down to price point, really. Corolla, non-GR. I mean, you can't even really compete with that. <laughs> I mean, non GR, right? So it's just like you can't, like, you can't put a basic economy car in the same group as that, unless that's what it's supposed to be. Maybe this one will be the performance car. Everyone, this is the baby NSX, and I did, I just did quotes because that, that's laughable to me. Well, I mean, they they say it does have a hybrid option. I just, I mean, I don't know what what that's going to offer as far as performance. It is an option. I think it'll it'll be some kind of miniature hybrid drivetrain like on the NSX has. Could be. It could be. It'll be another super handling all-wheel drive vehicle. Uh, I don't think they've talked about any numbers on this thing, right? No anticipated numbers? No, we don't just, know if it's full EV or hybrid, or is it? Or we know it's a hybrid. No, I, I think they, they announced that it was just, or it has a hybrid option. Hmm. But I think then you would just be competing with a Prius? Yeah. And again, wait, we haven't, we're, we're looking at photos. I haven't really dug into it. I think I quick read an article on it before, um, but not too much. Honda Pro puts out information. I didn't really follow that too much because I know he's the guy, but he always grabs other people's content and posts that instead of his own. <laughs> I mean, that's how social media works now, right? Yeah, I mean, I guess. But yeah, I didn't really see too much about it because it's a concept. Did you, uh, did you see the uh, the new, what is possibly the successor to the GTR? No. Is, that, is, is Nissan, is Infinity doing or is Nissan? Because I know that it's Infinity. Nissan. Okay, because Infinity made news and they're coming out with some new models, but um, because well, all the FX, QX guys are like, this is going to be the successor. Yeah, if you look up the the R three six GTR concept, um, or I I don't remember what it was called, but somebody posted something about it today or last night from the, uh, the Japanese Auto Show or whatever it is. Carwild.co.uk. Oh, I saw a picture of this. It looks yeah. like a crappy render. Yes, <laughs> but it's made flesh. 
That's not real, is it? Like someone made. I wonder if it's just it's like a at, rolling. It's at the auto show. Yeah, but I wonder if it's just like a rolling concept. I hope. Yeah, it's got to be. That, it's got to be. There's, there's no, no way, way that's no. There's no way. No, it looks like paper. Looks like paper craft. Yeah, there's no way that's real. Um, but hilarious, right? Yeah, it's. It looks like it would be, if I were to assign anything to this new R35 slash R36, this looks like it would be the Super GT3 kit version of the car because it's that maybe crazy looking. There's no production cars going to look like that. No. Yeah, there's no, <laughs> there's no way. I'm looking at a side picture. It almost has like a funky LFA look to the side. Can I see this? Showing it to him right now. What the hell? Yeah. That's different from the one I saw. Yeah, this is, there's no way. And then I'm sure that's not the Lambo doors. Okay, maybe it is the same one. It's just a different angle. It's funny when the three quarter view of a car is actually the worst view of it. That's awful. Right? Yeah, looking at this interior, there's no way. Yeah. yeah. But it's just a concept. Yeah, because like the three quarter is essentially the money shot for the car. That's a money shot. Yeah. But that's our thoughts on the prelude. Tell us what you think about it. Hardparkingpodcast at gmail.com. I know some of you are going to hit me up on Instagram, PM. Uh, how do people follow you, as always? Because we probably have new listeners from last time. Um, I do have my Instagram and my website. So Instagram at devil, you know, no W because Instagram likes to eat me and uh, Daniel Naku photo dot com. What Instagram doesn't like the, the what? They would let me have a W when I typed it in initially. That's oh, for just, devil, you know. Yeah. That's weird. But it's the letter U, right? No, it's spelled out. I asked you that last time too, didn't I? I think so. Yeah. You think I know better. Thanks for coming by the studio, man. We'll do it again. Absolutely happy to be here. As always, I want to thank Danny Niku for joining the show. Got to work on his mic discipline. It's a little hard to pick him up. And then I'm sitting across the room from him, so it was kind of hard to draw myself out. You probably couldn't tell, but with his, it, was, it wasn't picking up as well. I want to get into a little bit of card news before we wrap this episode up. Also, I have a new sponsor. 176,000 Honda Civic vehicles are recalled for a power steering issue. And this is the late model Honda Civics, like the FL5 Type R. So these are the 2022 to 2024 models. These are the ones with kind of the, the weird front nose that some people don't like. But the Honda Civic itself looks like a much more mature, almost like a German car instead of like a traditional, weirdly designed Honda. According to a notice at the NHTSA, National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, the recall applies to the 2002-2024 models that underwent certain service repairs. Flawed assembly of a replacement power steering racks may cause tire issues, says the recall. Okay, first off, why would any vehicle made in the last two calendar years have had to have their power steering rack replaced? Does that sound weird to anyone else? You don't even have to be a car person for that to sound Incredibly weird. It said, for those that have had it replaced, the rack may have been incorrectly assembled, leading to tire chafing against the lower suspension or tie rod end. The rubbing can lead to tire damage, and the resulting wear and tear can cause tires to fail, increasing the risk of crashes and or injury. Now, I've always wondered, when they decide to recall, how many examples does it take for them to officially give a recall? Right? Again, you don't have to be a car person to wonder that. But what is it? I, I could look it up. I don't feel like it right now because I'm trying to get in the show. But if three fail, you think they're going to do that? I don't think so. I think if three fail, they're just going to warranty the car. So there has to be some sort of internal investigation. And they had to decide, okay, we're going to have to recall this. Or maybe when they report the failure in the, in the computer at the local dealership, it flags the NH NHTSA, and then they put out, they say, Honda, get your shit together. You need to pack up all these vehicles that have potentially had this issue. Because here's the deal. 
176,000 Honda Civics. There's no way 176,000 of these things had the issue because later on it said if you've had your power steering thing replaced, it may have been assembled incorrectly. So I always kind of question this stuff. But if you have a new Civic, you know, going back to last year, get it checked out. Go to your dealership. It's probably going to be recalled. They're going to fix it. Give you a loaner, probably something cooler, and then uh, call it a day. I want to thank Wright Honda and Wright Toyota, fourwheelonline.com, sell shop wireless services. Also want to welcome our newest Patreon business supporter, Automotive Specialty Tool out of Owings Mills, Maryland. Patreon business supporter, Curry Automotive out of Winter Garden, Florida. Tall Construction out of Conway, Michigan. Big House Small Home Design, Ashbury, Virginia, Traverse City, Michigan. Shaving success with West Tankers, Lee out of Boise, Idaho. If you're in a position to help the podcast upgrade, join the Patreon for as little as $3 a month. You get access to bonus audio as well as show swag. So last episode, I had talked about the issue I had on social media. I went into more detail, almost a 30-minute episode this week. That's only available if you're a Patreon. Special thanks to Mark Stoneman, Catherine Cox, Eddie Ramos, Richard Graves, Byron Jones, Bo Jong, Alex Mina, Drew Bunkley, and new supporter, Dwayne Fish Johnson. Questions, comments, or concerns, hardparkingpodcast at gmail.com. Follow me on Instagram at jbinning. Join the Hard Parking Violations Facebook group. Special thanks to all the latest people who have joined Hard Parking Violations. I call you violators. If you haven't left a review on the show, please make sure you leave a review. Because remember, I can't grow that you're telling them all how great this show is. Let's do this. Let's grow this thing together. And I will talk to you all next week. Finally got around to trying that Arby's Wagyu burger. It was all right. I didn't like the little dressing shit they put on it. Shut up!